What should be on your horde radar this week in Marvel Strike Force? What is the best way to handle these new Greek raid difficulties? And how should you maximize your scores for this latest offensive event coming to Marvel Strike Force? We're talking about all of these things and more in this edition of your Marvel Strike Force Weekly News Update. This week, I'm joined by my brother, Run7. And if you're ready for it, Run7, tell him what to do. Let's go smash it. Alley flying. Hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel and this edition of your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. We're talking about a lot of things going on in Marvel Strike Force right now. The events, what you need to be hoarding for all these events coming up, the new Greek raid difficulties, how should you and your alliance handle all these things, and a lot more. If this is your first time here on the channel, though, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. There's at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel. Usually, there's a lot more news videos, tips, tricks, gameplay, everything to help your Marvel Strike Force experience. And this is a longer video, so there are timestamps down below. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this, then give it a great review on whatever platform you're listening to. But I want to welcome back my brother, Run7. How have you been? I've been great, Valley. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm glad you're back. It's always a fun, fun conversation with you. How are you enjoying Marvel Strike Force this week? Have they offended you this week with a new uh, pop event that just uh, came up? Or is that just like free stuff? No, no. It's just another week here in MSF land. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So uh, do you know what you are hoarding this week, uh, Run7? Well, I mean, the easy answer is everything, right? Hoard I mean, everything. Yes. <laughs> my my mailbox, I run it down to the last minute these days. In fact, I have that that one offer for a thousand energy that we got a while back, yeah. and it says it's got one day left on it. And I'm trying to see if I can make it to this event that starts tomorrow, and I'm not sure. So I'm waiting to see what the what the hour and minutes are on that. If I can hold it that long, or if I have mm. to collect it beforehand. All right. So yeah, there's. there's um, I'm surprised you didn't use it now. There's actually an event going on right now that you have to spend campaign energy and get these warlord orb fragments. But uh, as far as what you need to be hoarding for next week, February 13th, we have this atrocious attraction event. That is a blitzing event. You're gonna need to collect these Valentine's orb from Blitz, at least according to data mines. That so start saving all of your Blitz energy as soon as this Blitz event is over. All right, we also have to start to save gold orbs because this Grand Theft Quantum starting on February 16th. This is the big one. You're gonna need to get some red stars for Ultron with this. So you wanna get as many red stars as possible. So start saving your gold orbs run seven. And then last but not least, we have another coordinate assault after the current coordinate assault ends. Uh, so it's gonna end on February 12th. As soon as your alliance gets all of your uh, coordinate assaults milestones, start saving all of your ISO 8 refreshes. Uh, that is gonna start on February 18th. And I think that is it for all of the stuff that we need to save. But we have a new offensive milestone, a new specially offensive milestone that just got announced. Now, whenever I see these run, I think you know what, the, the, they're not making as much money as they thought they were gonna make. So they have to introduce these kind of events into the game to help with that stuff. Uh, but you need to start to save raid credits, spend campaign energy. Have you been hoarding all of your raid mail run? Oh yes, yes, I have a, a backlog of this. This is what I was saving that that 1000 campaign energy for. And uh, I don't know, we'll see We'll see how it goes. We don't have much more data on this one. It, it did kind of pop up almost unannounced basically and so and of course it's it's got a leaderboard on it which i'm so excited for <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah so the, these leaderboards the, the you know have, do you have confidence that they are going to fully implement these leaderboards uh properly and no. uh, eliminate the cheers no no <laughs> no because no, we're, we're going to talk about another blog post that they, they had to screw up on those as well but yeah usually usually it indicates that the sales are low when they run these kind of pop-up events uh, in the past it, when sales have been low they're like all right let's introduce another event with leaderboards with something coveted that the community wants like a five-star absorbing man so they could spend some crazy amounts now if you just want to get the normal stuff here like the teal and orange gear the gold and silver promo credits some character shards we're not sure who those character shards are going to be for uh you're going to need to save your raid credits so save everything in your mail if you haven't already started saving your raid credits we'll start doing that now from your uh, your Doom Raids or your Ultimus Raids or whatever you're in, 
campaign energy so hopefully this goes uh, this this has some good rewards for you run seven because i'm not sure what these rewards are we do know that the uh energy spending rewards we don't know what they are right now in the game what what was your decision to gamble on this event versus the current event that we know the uh rewards in the game right now uh, I didn't push too hard in the current event and ended up saving most of my in-game mail. I basically okay. was looking at what was about to expire in the mailbox and started collecting <laughs> all those things. And then I, I got to, I don't remember what milestone it was that my, my target was, but I got to my target and then I just kind of chilled for a bit. And how much, how much uh, blitzing did you have to do for this current event that's going on right now, this uh, Rage of the Past milestone? Um, I only did about probably three rotations a day maybe four just kind of whenever okay. i was around because we didn't really have to push that hard to get no. what to get the things that you needed i considered pushing hard for the 30 shards of brawn there at the bottom but ended up just going nah i'm kind of busy this week so i'm gonna pass yeah i mean the, the main one we want is this beauty belt everything else there i think is uh is just extra stuff there as long as you get your smartphones and your beauty belt uh the bronze shards are nice the extra shards of these other characters are nice and actually these shards of valkyrie put me over the top so before she came became farmable i already had a seven star valkyrie because of these events but mm -hmm. uh the pretty easy event if you're just going for the bare minimum you have to grind a little bit if you wanted to uh get these bronze shards and it was completable all of these milestones if you were willing to blitz enough uh you weren't willing to blitz enough for all these uh was it worth blitzing for some players though Oh, I definitely think it was probably worth blitzing for, for most players because we don't often get events that we can complete free to play like that. And that's what yeah. makes me wonder, was this a mistake? Were there supposed to be limitations on this one? Um, we haven't had something that we can complete in, in a while now. So yeah, this was definitely something that I should have taken advantage of, but I was just busy in real life. Yeah, that, that well, that is more important. Now the, the, the charts were this were a little weird because it said that there was uh, you, there's a limit on the amount of blitz credits you can earn seven and obviously that's not true so this this did get corrected and it's a pretty pretty uh nice event now the next event that we have going in the game uh coming up very very soon in the game is this crusher of heroes event that is the next one this is for absorbing man this is where you're going to introduce your alliance war battles raid battles and you're also going to have to spend power cores now we do have a limit for these in the game right now if we go and check out the event uh we can see the preview right now if you see the preview the scoring we see we have a limit for the raid battles that we could do for this event and that is twenty five thousand five hundred. we also have a limit for the war battles that we could do that is 2800 so that is a uh, 14 per day uh per war excuse me so that is that is a good thing the the charts where this were redone a lot of times this means that the most milestones that you get with the just blitzing and raids is 53,500. That brings us way past the, the the meta item, which is this thing right here, this uh, cosmetic case. It'll bring us into this and then just spending your power cores. Seems like you could get some dark promo credits and some ISO 8 4 credits. What did you think about this event when you saw it and the calculations you need to do to be pretty successful at this event? Well, I was frustrated that they have this opportunity to use those limits to correct that problem where your alliance full clears and you didn't get enough attacks mm. in. They could have done that here and they didn't. It's still the 14 attacks instead of 12 or 10. Yeah. And, and they could have calculated the points differently so that it still comes out the same, but you only have to get 10 war attacks in or 12. And, and, and that would have solved some of the issues with the previous one. So there was a missed opportunity there. And then as for spending the power cores, I think... I think the tiers are something like spend 500 to get something good and then it's like 2000 cores and then it's like 5500 cores to to like maximize the event. And I, I you know I'm I don't even have 5500 cores anymore because I've been blowing through these events like crazy. But I think that um I might push the limits and spend some extra cores. I wish that his orb would be available during this core spending event because then mm. I would double dip. You know, I'd buy his orb and get the points towards this event by by coring because normally coring for his orb isn't great, but it yeah. turns out like pushing for this event, you it might even be better to core his orb before the event than try and spend 5,000 or 8,000. I forget what the math is on this. I'm not the math guy, but um, I'm not sure I would want to try and maximize this event for absorbing man i think i would just kind of push to that medium range 
Gotcha. Yeah, I'm trying to get as many shards as possible for him. And you do bring up a good point. This was something that I recently brought up in there. Why Why do they have these limits? And it's still 14 battles. Uh, I know some of the top end alliances are really pushing for those full clears for that full efficiency. But if you do that, then you're you're kind of screwing yourself for these mm -hmm. events. So are you exactly. one of those alliances that are very, very efficient in war that this is going to kind of hurt you and you're going to have to play ineffective to maximize these events? Uh, my alliance does full clear from time to time, and no. I tend to be asleep when that happens. So this directly affects me. I only get in 10, sometimes 12 attacks before the alliance full clears, and then I, I get I miss out on some of those extra war attacks. So that that's not any good for me. And I'm I'm kind of wondering, it feels like the the implemented the limits because Scopely says, well, we want them to do a little bit of this and a lot of this. So we'll limit them on this and we'll have this unlimited over here. But um, and, and I understand that from a game making point of view, but they have yeah. an opportunity here that they could have resolved an issue that the community has been complaining about since these war attack events uh, have been running and and they didn't yeah, i thought that i thought that's exactly what they introduced the limits for is to reduce the hoarding and uh, and and things like this this these to reduce the effectiveness of our attacks just to get these milestones just seems kind of counterintuitive for the game so i thought that's what they were going to do maybe that's what they'll do in the future because uh there's, there's a lot of suggestions in the envoy chat that this kind of stuff should be going on so hopefully they take notice of that now as far as the direct power cores and uh, shards that you get for absorbing man it may have been better to get that uh those orbs itself but when you look at these the rest of these milestones you got dark promo credits in there you got iso mm -hmm. yeah iso uh eight for going all that extra stuff all that stuff as well which 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 are you happy that uh you can hopefully get some of this other stuff or do you wish that you would have spent it there just for the direct shards um, well, I tell you what, if they would have let me double dipped on, on, on his orb, that been awesome. I, that, that, I would have been, been reconsidering, awesome. been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I would have been reconsidering my free to play status being like, man, I could really knock this one out of the park, but I don't want to do either. I don't really want to spend my cores to go through the milestones and I'm definitely not going to core orbs for characters because the drop rates just feel so bad. You know, 675 yeah. cores and then you pull a six, nine times out of 10, Ugh. it just feels bad. So, it um, does. I always buy one of those orbs for every new character just to remind myself that you shouldn't do that. I always, I always every time I buy one of those orbs, I'm thinking 600 cores for six shards. And then, you know, yeah. usually I'm not disappointed because I'm, I'm thinking that. And if I get something good, then it's awesome. But yeah, I'm thinking, oh, this is six shards. This is six shards. No, I, I think players should just, you know, watch your favorite content creator of who breaks down these events and everything. Decide how far you want to push in the milestones for the amount of cores out there. There's infographics. There's talk to your alliance mates and everything else. For me, I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking at completing it. I'm going to be refreshing 50s which will probably give me close to the 500 cores i need to get to like the first i think it's uh what are we looking at milestone 33 is probably like the first benchmark that's pretty good there yeah. um yeah so so yeah i'm not gonna push too hard i think probably 33 just just looking at your screen there valley i think 33 looks pretty good and that's probably gonna cost me something like 2,000 cores so that's, we'll, we'll that's decide not, how, how that's far not i want to go bad in my opinion that's not that bad uh, all right, but we we got I think the big news of this week is the thing that we didn't even get announced We got we just got it in the game. No blog post no announced when it was work when it went live And that is these new Greek raid difficulties. We've had div, uh, Greek raid four for a while But we've uh, we've only went up to a few difficulties here Let's go take a look at some of the rewar new reward tiers for difficulty four and we also have a difficulty five in the game We can look at the details there uh difficulty five here no heals still allowed and if we look at the stats here jumping from previous difficulty three 4.3 at 250 health 250 percent health going at 500 percent for difficulty four 750 percent for difficulty five all the rest of the stats are up you're getting a little more bonus per node as far as gold but not as far as raid credits and um, your premium orb credits uh and then per tier you're getting more of these gamma raid orb fragments which are pretty much ultimate food for most alliances at this time you're getting more of these orange elite fragments but i think the big question here is it worth pushing your characters up to gear tier 16 you're going to need five characters at least uh per each of these lanes to get to this gear tier 16 for these teal elite 
or fragments. Your initial thoughts on this, is this something that your alliance is pushing forward? Uh, are you pushing to gear up some of your characters to gear 16 for these raids? Uh, my alliance, no. <clears throat> no we're we're okay. going gonna to just gonna be pushing through difficulty four right now. Uh, it really depends on where you stand with your alliance, with your roster. So if you are um, a fully engaged light spender, I'm seeing a lot of those players who are in um, highly coordinated alliances getting to 30 and 60 percent in difficulty five. Okay, if you okay. and, and, and Krakens are going to be the only ones that are going to be getting 100 percent in difficulty five because you need to buy absolute garbage tunes. You need to push them to the limits. And I don't recommend that. So what what I recommend to people for this situation that that we have going on here is that if you are on the cusp of one of these difficulty levels, mm -hmm. go ahead and build the characters that don't hurt so bad, that don't feel so bad. Go ahead and build those characters and shoot for 30%. Shoot for 60% if you want. Challenge yourself to, to, to go through there and be very efficient with your attacks and make things work and have some fun with it. But mm. don't build the garbage characters. Don't build the Pym Tech team. Don't build Cree <laughs> members. Avoid, you know, avoid lanes one and eight if you can. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of different, there's infographics and there's videos out there that are going to show people how to get through this situation if you are willing to try, but I don't think anyone should build for this specifically. We've got the other raids coming up, the other Greek raids coming up that are going to be much easier to complete at those difficulties. And yeah. I think Gamma is just one that we don't have good solutions for them. And I think we will get good solutions in the future. And Scopely will probably even make the rewards better so that we are influenced to buy those solutions. And in the now meantime, what? honestly, like one, two and three teal gear, those mm. now those are 17s. So they're good. It's It's enough to make us think, hey, should I try for this? But it's not so much that we have to really feel bad if we can't partake in difficulty five or even, you know, difficulty four, which is just there. Basically, difficulty four is just there for fun because the rewards yeah. there. There's, there's nothing to really push you into that one. Do, so, yeah. So I think they did a good job with this. I think Scopely set this up great so that people who had nothing to do can now challenge themselves to four and five and see how hard they want to push. The Krakens can Kraken like they always do and go for the 100% and really push their their uh, raid uh, leaderboards and stuff like that. And the rest of us can... We don't have to feel bad that we're missing out on this because yeah. we know now that Teal Gear isn't really the bottleneck for Apocalypse. It looks like it's the blue Ions, and they aren't rewarding Ions here, so yeah. I'm just going to play at my level. Yeah, I agree. I think this should have been a win for the Scopely. And we talked about this beforehand, right? We, th th people think that they have all these nefarious means and they're playing 4D chess with some of the actions that they do. This should have been an easy win for them. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the players that want something to do, they have something to do. If you can't do this, one extra orb or a couple extra orbs isn't that big of a deal. So you're not missing out on much. This should have been a win for them, but they can't even, this has not even been publicized. They didn't even talk right. about this. They didn't talk about their last blog post. So this is uh, why I get paused every little, time someone says they have some some plans up their sleeve. Like, no, they just forget about stuff a lot. Right. I think, I think like one line of dialogue would have really helped the introduction <laughs> of this. Just saying, hey, by the way, we're going to be throwing out some higher difficulties for the Greek raids to challenge some of our bigger, more competitive alliances right um maybe state that hey you know there's uh, a little bit of a reward there to entice you guys but don't feel bad if you can't miss out on it something along those lines so that people yeah, go oh hey this is coming up and yeah it's more for the challenge i mean yeah. i i want the teal 17s that sounds fantastic but i'm not i'm not gonna build pim tech wouldn't it be great though if we did get a rework for the Pym Tech team for for this upcoming movie that's coming out? Yes. And I don't know, make them a crucible defense or something. Well, people would hate that, but you know what I mean. Give them some value elsewhere other than just the dark dimension, the pocket dimension, and stuff. So, well, I, I do want to get your thoughts on what do you think they're going to do with the Greek raids because they they haven't been updated for a while now. But uh, before we get to that and the infographic that you sent for the best teams for each lane, I do want to ask you. You know, eventually. In a way, if you expand out the timeline, this is going to be worth it to bring your characters up to gear tier 16 because you're mm -hmm. getting teal gear in return. How long do you think it's going to take to make it worth it to bring your characters up? Is it if it's maybe one or two characters, it's going to be worth it within a few months? Where Where, where, is, where is that break point for? Oh, it is worth it for. No, you shouldn't do that. I, I think 
Push as hard as you can with the roster you already have. Coordinate with your alliance to cover certain lanes to see if you can get 30% without building anything. And if you're if you're just a few percentage points away or or you know maybe even 10% away, then look at your roster, pick the characters that you think will help you the most that have the most long-term value and we can take a look at some of those characters if you want. Yeah. And and, and like maybe one or two characters. Teal gear isn't as rare as we thought it was going to be. And I think that we can afford to put a few things on there. And you know what? We have this pocket dimension coming up that's uh, awarding, I think, 2,099 shards. And, you know, a lot of people are going to have to use Ghost. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. you want to go ahead and do that. Maybe that's why they did this. Maybe that's why they pushed it out because they're like, oh, hey, Pimtech could be used in this pocket dimension and they need a solution for 1.8. Maybe it'll convince somebody. I don't think it's convincing enough for me. I'm not going to be building Ghost. I'm not going to touch Pimtech. I'm not going to touch yeah. Kree. But I will take a look at lanes two and seven. I will take a look at lanes three and six. And there are some characters that maybe I could bring up and it doesn't make me feel too bad. But honestly, maybe like touch up two characters just to try to get to that next rung on the on the on the board there. And that's about it. Yeah, well, well, let's talk about those specific characters. You, you sent me this infographic and uh, I, I can't remember. Who, who did you say? This is from or... Rogan and, and friends. Rogan. They're, they're listed on the right there. I, I don't know all their okay. names, but they, they send okay. infographics to me and put These them in my are... Discord all the time. These are their uh, symbols here for you guys. All right, so lanes one through eight. You said this was the worst, and this is the one that you have to either use your Cree or your Pimtech. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's pretty easy in the beginning. You have your Wave 1 Avenger, uh, your Bionic Avengers. You have your Secret Avengers. You have Spider-Verse that you could use. A lot of, lot of great characters there. What Would you would you start to upgrade Ghost or... or Captain Marvel or Philavel or so, Yellow Jacket or anybody at this point. So I have an A-Force team that I use. A-Force, I think, is a luxury team. So I'm not sure if Captain Marvel is for everybody. Philavel, again, I built the Infinity Watch. In fact, mine's a little small for what I use it for in Crucible, but it's a valuable mm -hmm. team still. It's one of the few teams that held its value for a long time. So I yes. don't have a problem upgrading Philavel a little bit, but the rest of them are a no-go for me. And you need five people to make it through the raid lanes. Watch yeah. Dorky Dad's video for how horrible that is if you don't get all five people through. And the Pimtech, unless they rework that team, and I need value outside of Dark Dimension, I need value outside side of gamma lanes before I'm going to touch them. I want them to work in crucible at, or at least in war. I need somewhere else for them to work. So until I get a rework, I'm not touching lanes one through eight. I just won't do it. I exactly. will wait until a new character comes out that's a, that has a Cree tag. And then I'll see if, if I want to do something like that. But in the meantime, I mean, yeah, double up on lanes going two and seven and three and six. Wakandans, they're a, a great war and crucible team. So there's mm -hmm. value there. We've, you know, for those older players that have an um, astonishing X Men team, it still works great. Or you could just stick with the Unlimited. Um, everybody was complaining that the Web Warriors were obsolete now that Rebirth came out. Well, here you go. You can use them. If you don't want to do that, Underworld's a great war team. I'm getting mm. defensive victories with them in Crucible right now. So pairing them up with Tangled Web it sounds like a winner to me. These aren't terrible. It's just how do you want to choose to spend your time and resources in this game? And I think they made it so that you don't have to feel too bad if you just decide this ain't for me. Yeah, I think I think the rest. I mean, I think Pim is the worst. The rest mm -hmm. of them don't seem that bad. The only other questionable one that I see is these heroes for hire in these uh, middle lanes here. Right. Would you, are they still worth building up? Do they have any kind of value at this point in the game? Even they're not even that valuable in war defense anymore with nope. the bunch of counters that they have. So is it, is it worth building up heroes for hire at this point? Uh, just maybe yeah. just Colleen or Misty or Luke, just for those middle lanes. Is that worth that extra teal gear? Not not for me, because I kind okay. of skipped the, the Heroes for Hire team. In fact, I went a long time without even building Shang-Chi. So now I do have Shang-Chi built up. He's like six or seven red stars, too. I kind of went crazy. Nice. Nice, but nice. the rest of the team, I totally avoided as best I could. So for me, that's a real terrible one. Other people, um, older players, might still have a pretty decent investment in their Heroes for Hire, and it just needs a little touch-up. They just need to put the teal gear onto them or something like that. For me, I'm, I'm bringing them out of the purple gear, so it's a it's definitely no-go okay, for me. Okay. All that gold to level them up and stuff, no way. 
but you know, in what we got four and five, you've got um, Winter Soldier and Zemo in there. I'm going to be building the rebirth here eventually. And I already have Zemo built up and I already have Shang-Chi. So I could get by with just touching up those two characters. Still feels bad for me. Mm -hmm. So I would just be like, hey, um, I have a pretty big Wakandan. So Alliance leader, could you stick me in lane two or seven, please? And if they do, they do. And if they don't, well, maybe and I consider and a new alliance. Somebody, I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to bite the bullet for the alliance and build up those right. heroes for hire, you know, and the or or the even the pim deck just to get that at sixty percent. I hear if you go with the outside lanes, that'll give you fifty-seven percent, and then you don't have to do the heroes for hire. Is that the numbers that you're uh, hearing about as yeah, well? Yeah, something something like that. You you hit the you, the outside lanes, and then you um, somebody just does a couple of nodes in the center, and you can get to sixty percent. And so, like I said, I, I'm seeing. Fully engaged light spenders getting 60% in gamma when they were shooting for 30% and they ended up getting to 60. Okay. And so it's, you don't have to be an ultra kraken. You just have to know what you're doing, be an experienced player. And you do have to have a little bit of a wide roster or just be an older player and have some of these things available. And if you can coordinate with your alliance, there is a chance that you can get two teal orbs instead of one or get the teal orb instead of just your first time rewards at 4.4 and then drop back, you know, and just stay there or whatever. And gotcha. doing 4.4 for a while and waiting for the next iteration and for newer characters or for teal gear to just be cheaper, easier, and more abundant, that's that's a fine option. You're, you're not going to miss out on Apocalypse because you can't do 4.5. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Now, uh, I, that leads to my next question about these uh, raids here. We go in game right now. We haven't had updates to these raids for a while. And oh, I, I one more point I wanted to make. The reason we're talking about 60%, that is where you could get those first time rewards. So that is the reason that you and your alliance may want to be pushing to that 60% for those first time rewards. Then you could drop down to 30% or drop down to the other raids. Uh, but yeah, 60% is the big break point. But let's talk about these, uh, these Greek raids itself. You know, uh, the, the alpha and beta with the tags that aren't, that aren't that bad, but we, we're talking about the tags for the gamma raids here. Pimtech, Cree, Cures for Hire, other useless tags. And I want to get your predictions of what you think are going to happen. You mentioned possibly a Pimtech getting a rework with this with this pocket dimension and everything. Do you, what do you think more likely to happen? Uh, some of these teams like Pim and Cree get reworked or change into tags maybe putting those ravager tag back on these gamma raids what do you what do you expect to happen with these raids because these orbs are trash their additional rewards are trash the only thing worth potentially building up to difficulty five is these teal elite orbs but everything else seems like not worth it at all to me if anything they would add tags to this to alleviate some of this uh they but I honestly, I kind of think that this Quantum Mania movie threw a wrench in the works for Scopely. Uh, a lot of times, the licensing, I, 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 it's my understanding, I'm no expert in this field, but it's my understanding that the licensing forces them to do certain things when movies and stuff come out. They have to promote characters or, or something like that. And I kind of think that's why we got Kang on the Masters of Evil when he wasn't really a good fit. And then um, with the Pimtech team, I kind of feel like they're supposed to do some sort of an event, but I don't think they were prepared to do a rework for this team. I, we have heard no real legitimate rumors mm. or any mumblings about Pimtech getting reworked. So I'm not expecting anything to really happen. I think if the community community complains enough, they will add some sort of a tag to certain lanes, which means that you will have a different thing that you could invest your resources in, but I don't think they're going to remove any tags. I doubt they're going to just make it easier in general. Everything Scopely does has to produce some sort of value for them, you know, real world money for them, or they won't do it. So adding a tag to it so that characters can go, oh, well, I like that team. I'll build them for, for lanes one and eight. Mm -hmm. That might be a thing to do, but I don't know. I just... This, uh, this one's just kind of a tricky situation. All right, and, and what about these other ones? Other than these, uh, other than these orbs being super outdated, do they need to go back and relook at these alpha and beta raids as well, or just the gamma and those bad tags that we have? Well, we'll see when we get to try the higher difficulties in in the other ones in in beta and in alpha. I still am waiting for Delta to come out. Like, can we get a Delta raid? Something completely different with a, a wide variety of tags that forces us to completely break up these cookie cutter teams and use a, a variety of individual characters. That would be way more fun for me because then we could really theorycraft about what we want to put in there. 
Um, I, I kind of find that more interesting. I know a large portion of the player base wants their cookie cutter team. They want to go, oh, I use X, Y, Z for this node and hit auto and it goes. Um, I personally like to try and kind of think my way through some of these things. So I'm hoping they come out with a Delta. I don't even know what's in these orbs, Valley. I haven't looked at the bottom of that page in, my, in my game for so long because there's nothing in there for me. Yeah, I, I, the only reason I open these is when I when there's something in the Ultimus Orb that I want. I'm like, all right, let's open all of these, and hopefully I get some get those 15 shards of a character that I want in these Ultimus raids. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with these. I, I, I do think that they tried to make that Delta raid, but it was so poorly received with that as Gambit raids. That's kind of uh, the mix and match theories that you were asking for. I, I, I enjoyed that part, but I didn't enjoy that, you know, they were asking us to build up characters for a limited time raid. There was those problems with it, but I do enjoy the few aspects and that that non cookie cutter aspect of the Gambit raids. I, I did enjoy that part mm -hmm. as well. All right. We also got this new thing. This was planned. This is uh, not actually not in the event section our campaign section. We got two new chapters. We got chapter five. The hard chapter five of the heroes and the hard chapter five of the villains. Uh, some of the best things in here stood out to me. The Valkyrie, that was uh, previously unfarmable, but uh, like I said, I got her to seven stars right before this game farmable from the milestones. Uh, Echo, she is available in the war store right now, but um, this is a hard sort of farm. So if you want those Echo shards, you can get this. I like this one that they gave. The uh, five, three of heroes and villains. We have all these catalysts. And then if we go to these villains nodes as well, uh, some of the new things that we got at these villains are Doctor Strange Heartless Farmable, previously only available in the arena orb. Uh, we have this one, which looks like a placeholder. And we're talking about this one on villains five, six, with these augmented catalyst parts. And then we have more catalysts on villains five, three. Are there any other nodes that stood out to you? Which And which is your favorite of these nodes that we mentioned just now? Well, I think this five, on both heroes and villains is a big win for the community introduced a lot of farmable characters i was just about to have no hearted characters in my roster to farm oh, and so now i've got okay. a full boat <laughs> i've got a okay. full boat nice, of all these characters nice. to go through i think it's cool that we're getting more gold orbs more uh, ability uh what is it training training orbs in in these nodes that's fantastic yeah, and of course chapters. we've got we've got sixes coming soon with dazzler and i think viv vision also so i'm looking forward to that this is fantastic uh it couldn't have come you know any sooner i i i'm i'm just stoked i think there's there's nothing bad about this to me at all so i'm really happy about it now I, i'm not sure the free to, the the new player experience how challenging it is to get to these of course i hit auto on these nodes and just yeah. unlocked them and now they're just on my regular farms but i'm i'm enjoying it because i get to farm like echo and 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 farm gold orbs and stuff which we need gold orbs a lot lately because of all these gold spending events so a big win for me what do you think about the fact that they included uh, these Warlord Orb Fragments in all of these new nodes? It seems like all of these new hard chapters have these Warlord Orb Fragments attached to them, whereas previous events, uh, it was only on select nodes. Right. I wish they would have put this on the Kate Bishop because I was farming her as well, and now I have to hold off farming her because I got to get the Warlord Orbs. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's the only one that's that other than everything that I already was farming, okay. that's the only node that didn't have them. So I'm OK with the bonus nodes. I I kind of wish they would just put the, the orbs in everything instead of just select nodes. But they did a good yeah, job of that's... spreading them out where people are already farming anyway. Yeah, I, I, I haven't noticed that one. I've uh, done with the Kate Bishop. But yeah, th it should be on more of these instead of just the on the select nodes. All right, uh, and I guess the, the the next question is the predictions. You already mentioned we're getting more sources of training orbs. We're getting more source of gold orbs. We're getting Dazzler. We're getting Viv Vision when chapter six coming. When do you think this is gonna come? I think this is sometime in this update. You think it's next week, the week after, or sometimes later towards the end of February? They'll stretch it out for a ways. This I don't think this one's coming that soon. It'll be three, four weeks out, I'm sure. Okay. Um, because like I said, I have a, um, let me see, I have 12 hearted characters that I'm farming and, and <laughs> actually, actually Dazzler and Viv are R2. So I have 10 hearted characters that are available for me to farm right now, patiently nice. awaiting the, the next two on the list. And so, uh, I think that 
they're going to stretch this out as far as they can. They want to. They want to make sales on Dazzler yes. and and Viv first. So they're they're in no rush to do that. <clears throat> I like I like that they're adding this stuff though. So that's yeah. that's a good stuff. All right. Um, good things. Good things with these new heroes chapters. And we also have an event coming up this week. Returning this week. And I believe it is the third time that we're getting this War Scourge coming back. How did you do in the last event? Is your Red, is your Red Hulk already seven stars? No, I screwed up again. And, and the second time in a row on this War Scourge that I meant to go back in and get a better run and didn't. Oh. And so that, I am that, still that, missing one star on my Red Hulk. real life run, Seven. You oh, gotta I stop know. your real life and set alarms so that you can play Marvel Strike Force more effectively. The good news is the third time through should be a cakewalk at this okay, point, good. you know, because everybody else already has their seven stars, you know, where not where, me, uh, not me. I need these oh. milestones. I need the hundred in these milestones to get mine. So I'm not there. Yet oh, okay, so I'm, I'm happy. This is coming back. Also, well, my arena shard is all seven uh, red hulks in there. So. Oh, so um, is mine. I, I'm, I'm the only one with the six in there. Yeah, and you feel that seventh star in, in the yeah, arena. You, you feel yeah, it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I would have one shot at a no today if my Red Hulk had seven stars instead of six. So. Right. <laughs> All right. So uh, Hero Asgardians, Wave 1, Avengers, Ravagers, any other problem nodes that you remembered here? Or is it just those nodes five and ten? No, it was uh, this was uh, this one was a pretty well balanced, well built scourge. I just didn't find I just missed the timing in because of real life. You know, the first run is 10 days and the second run is seven days, I believe. And so the second time around, for some reason I had in my head, it was going to be 10 days and I just, I, thought I, it was, I, I missed it. it. I, thought it was, I thought it was 10 and five. Maybe that's or 10 why. and five. Yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I thought seven, it was going to be seven, seven and, and it was head. five. Yes. Okay. Maybe that was it. Anyway, All I'm right. going to do it on day one this next time. Get prep commanders. And if you already have your seven star red Hulk, uh, this one is not as bad as the Morgan Le Fay to get that 1.5 to get all those milestones. So this is a very good one. All right. We've just, I guess it's not technically ended yet, but uh, the third week of season two of Cosmic Crucible is almost over. What do you think of this uh, third season now? Any change from what you thought of week uh, from week one or week two? Uh, I know the big thing that happens since those is the Red Hulk special uh, that I do want to talk about specifically. But anything else besides that Red Hulk special? New offenses, new defenses that you're noticing? Uh, this this season's defenses did get a little bit stale. I'm not seeing a lot of variety. Everybody kind of realized that the way to go was a light defense, a heavy offense. And so we're kind of seeing the same things like what you've got on your screen right there. Some pretty, pretty common stuff there, you know, unlimited in four, tangled web in five. And of course, Wakandans in six. And then you're usually just putting trash fillers in the other three. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you get like an underworld in in five instead or something like that. But not a whole lot of variety, not a whole lot of fun for me. I'm kind of over it. I, I'm glad we got away from Age of X. And that was a very interesting change of pace noticing that your hero mutants are not the godlike characters that we thought they yes. were and, and getting used to that change but i'm used to it now and i'm ready for other things i think it is kind of weird that the war meta team beats the crucible meta team you know yeah, gamma that, into that's the counter. unlimited that's the yeah. counter right it's weird yeah, and we've seen even with the proper placement, which um, which you don't have right there, by the way. <laughs> oh, this is um, this is not my defense. Oh, this that's is, okay. This is, this, oh. This, I'm not putting Kingpin here. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With with Gambit next to Rogue, you can still beat it with Gamma. It's just a much more tricky match. You know, punch down a little bit more. But that's kind of uh, kind of funny that 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 the Gamma team can still beat the Unlimited team. You'd think the Unlimited yeah. team would have the upper hand there, but. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to get something else in six. I have not seen a single like no one's even sent me a screenshot of anything else in six that that was a serious, you know, screenshot of, of anything. So I'm, I'm ready for this one to change into something else. But no. I, I mean, I'm still having fun playing Cosmic Crucible. It is my favorite game mode. I me really well. like getting involved with the community, having fun, you know, when chat's helping you out or, you know, sandbagging you or whatever it's it's a lot of fun it's it's uh it, it's so it's cool now the other thing i wanted to mention are these two new uh i'm not sure if they're a bug or a nerf we've, we've been asking for clarity on the weaver special 
uh, it looks like she's losing charges way faster than she was previously. Mm -hmm. And still not sure if it's a bug or a nerf. Before we move into the Red Hulk one, though, what do you think about these Weaver charges? Is, is it a bug or is it a nerf? So I've been talking with some people about that. It's my understanding that that's how it used to work a while okay. ago. And then they changed it. And so like Gambit's passive wasn't stripping them or other passives weren't stripping them. And then since the pass, the, the, the patch, it's reverted back to that now. And so okay. we're seeing her charges getting stripped away much faster. Um, so you think it's working correctly or they reverted an old bug that was happening? What do, what do, was, what do you think is happening? I was used to it the previous way and I kind of hope they go back before the patch. So yeah. but at the same time, it's not game breaking. And a lot of people were complaining that her her mechanic was too powerful and so this does kind of nerf it and they have cover to say well this is how it was originally intended to do and the old yeah. way was was a was a bug and we just reverted it back so they could hide behind that i think that's a bunch of bs but um so i would like it how they had it previously not the original but the, just previously where sh her charges last longer and and less things take them away that would be my favorite but i'm okay either way it's not a big deal to me now, there's a conspiracy theory going around that that has to do with the free 4,000 Weaver shards that everybody got. Do you think those are two unrelated things and it's a coincidence or this change oh has to do with those Weaver shards? <laughs> I know I know you're egging me on here, Valley, because I we want to hear it. But to your viewers, please, they are not that smart. They are not that smart. OK, they are not already. playing I 40 to, chess. I wanted, hear, I wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> they are not that smart, guys. Yeah, they didn't take the wins on the new raid. They didn't even announce it. It's just live in the no. game. They may not announce it in this blog post. <laughs> All right, next big one. Let's talk about Red Hulk. And Red Hulk had a change in this recent patch. It was announced that he's supposed to be removing the revive once before he does his attack. And mm -hmm. in Arena, that is a much better. But as we were just start to notice in crucible that is a nerf to him especially countering this rogue that uh, it used to counter before the update went live uh as eve because she starts off with evade mm -hmm. and you would go through the evade or you would do your move remove all that stuff and then he would remove the revive once now it works in a different operation do you think that that uh not being able to remove that revive once or you know having it be blockable do you think that is intended or that was some kind of nerf this red hulk special well, I mean, they obviously they did change the order of operations intentionally. There were a lot yes. of complaints about that because of arena and as a as collateral damage. Now we have a problem in crucible, which I found this out live on stream to the sound of my friend's laughter and realized, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, rogue evades this now. So, uh, OK, um, I just want them to pick one and stick with it. I got used to Arena. I figured out the way to get around Weaver and, and not worry so much. You know, I, I just didn't use his special to kill Weaver. I went elsewhere yeah. and then would use the Weaver special on their Weaver to kill her and not be revived. Um, and so I was fine with it the way it was, and I liked it in Crucible the way it was. And now I have to teach myself to play differently again. So Scopely, just pick one and stick with it, please. And make an announcement. See, let us know what the real one is. What is it supposed right. to be? We don't. We still not sure if this is a nerf or maybe not a nerf, but a change or if it's a bug. Make that clear. See if it's if it's going to be changed mm -hmm. again because it's not intentional or this is how it's supposed to be. That's 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 what I'm more upset about. I want to know. I want to know what the intention is in the game right now. I don't think that they knew that this was going to happen in Crucible. <laughs> I I think they they switched it. You know, they they heard some some people complaining about it and they switched it and then this happened and they're like oh man now you're what right. do they do you're right they had no idea they had no idea they, they don't they don't play this game as uh, as extensively as we do all right but we had another thing that was working awesome that is not working as well msf.gg is no longer now if you type msf.gg you'll get forwarded right to marvel strike force so it's kind of a seamless transition uh the blog posts look different 
and I'm getting logged out a lot. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's happening to you. Yeah. I did reach out to Pimp Toxie and Ty J. They said they're aware of that. That is something that they're working on. So uh, it, it is, it's not just me. And if it's your experience, yeah, it's not just you either, but they're looking for a fix for that. Uh, what have you noticed other than those things? Is are those the main things that's happening or is the site better? Is it worse? Is it the same to you? What, what are you noticing with this change to MSF to MarvelStrikeForce.com from MSF.GG? I don't know. This is like the Scopely curse or something. It's like everything they touch just breaks. MSFGG was a perfectly functioning website and they put their name on it now. And it, I, I'm every time I log in, I have to redo my credentials. It's annoying. Sometimes I have to sit there and click the refresh button just to get things to pop up like they're supposed to. It's really annoying because MSFGG was working great. And now MarvelStrikeForce.com is this clunky beast that doesn't do what I want it to do. It does ultimately function. It's just frustrating that just you have slow. to do the extra steps to make it happen. Uh, as far as everything else, you know, they did some touch-ups. They moved some, a few minor things around, got rid of some things, consolidated some things, and that's fine. So they didn't, they didn't remove any functionality that I didn't use and um it, uh, otherwise that's it so once they get these bugs worked out and i have full faith in in, in toxie and ty j to to get this up and running right uh once that once they get it panned out it'll be fine yeah i, I mean i it, it was it was marvelstrikeforce.com it had to go for our uh webs to our milestones there it was very slow then they changed the msf.gg and it got really fast and everybody's happy now it went back to marvelstrikeforce.com and it's all slow and buggy and Hopefully that hopefully Pimtox and Ty J do have some input into how this is running. Hopefully it's not these scopely people that's running it now that the name has changed over and that's why it's like this. So uh yeah, hopefully hopefully it gets better. All right, we also had some leaderboards. We talked about some leaderboards and bugs and everything like that. February 1st, the Super Patriot event milestone ended a leaderboard was incorrect some players were not correct receiving the correct score. The payout for these rewards went out this Saturday. Uh, so what, what is going on with this? Do you, I, I ask you if you have confidence in future leaderboards because of this, what do you think is going to be done with all these future leaderboards? Are we going to have more of these kind of the same kind of problems or will Scopely learn their lessons from their previous mistakes and actually, uh, make it better? Well, the thing is, is a lot of the leaderboards in this game now are auctions and there's a lot of money riding on them to function properly. So I do expect them to start making these things work on a regular basis because the some of the largest spenders in the game are competing for these goodies that are atrociously dangled in front of the entire community with no intent for the majority of us to get any of those goodies. But the big players. Wait, the big wait, you mean that I'm not going to be able to get a five red star absorbing man from this pop up flash event? Uh, fingers crossed, Valley. Fingers oh, crossed. Oh, man, I was hoping for that. I'm going to get a good pull for him. I don't want to dash your hopes, man. Oh, man. No, I don't I don't even pay any mind to these these uh, leaderboards for the real the big stuff. You know, that that last one with what was it? The seven red star Dormammu, which like most of the Krakens already had, they were going for the ions. Ten, 10 alliances got that or something like that. Right, it was, it yeah. Was very they're, they're like, hey, here's this thing that a lot of people in the community want, but the people who are actually going to get it are going for this thing over here, and they don't care about this, but they're going to dangle this in front of everybody else and make us think that we have a chance. We don't have a chance. Like, yeah. if you're if you're not, you know, busting your bank account on this game, forget about it. Don't don't worry about it. These leaderboards just they're not yeah. for you. The devs you know? are, only oh, no, yeah, leaderboards are for like, large large yeah. spinners. And well, we get we get a little tiny thing, right? There's usually a big grand prize, all the right. good stuff, and then and then the one percent and lower is like free stuff, and that yeah. that part is good. I I guess but my point is is that there is a lot of money coming into the game because of these leaderboards pressing the big spenders to compete against each other's wallet and so they do have a, a strong incentive to make these things work uh, correctly and work do the they, first time without upsetting anybody do they are the players still going to be spending over and over because these these have been broken for a long time and the profits well, are still up there right so do they have a real incentive to do that <laughs> i mean i don't i don't rub elbows with the big boys too often but from the few people that i talk to that spend a lot of money on this game they say that leaderboards is a real issue for the kraken spenders mm. 
And that's what Scopely has been milking. I mean, you can look through the offers and see at the cost of these offers have gone up exponentially. Mm. They're focused at the high end and they need to pay attention to those players and make sure that they're happy and making sure that these leaderboards are fair and equitable should be one of their biggest priorities from a financial standpoint in this game. I 100% agree it should be. Hopefully it is. All right, let's move on to the data mines, though. These are always fun. We've got a few new ones. Let's let's run through these initial ones. We got new strike passes coming. Season 29 is looks like it's going to be Dark Beast and Deathpool. And as we scroll down, it looks like season 28. So the next season is going to be Nemesis and Kestrel. So it looks like they're returning to these uh, easier to get strike passes to a month. And I guess that uh, was successful in December and they're they made some money. So they're going to bring it back. So we got season 31 of Mojo's Mayhem. That's going to be for Gambit, and Season 30 is going to be Phantom X. What do you think of these new uh, doubled up on these Strike Passes and Mojo's Passes? Well, I mean, it's great for free to play, right? They get they get twice the stuff now. That um, is I forgot about that. That is that is very good as well, yes. Spender's got to buy them twice. But I, I like the characters that are showing up in here. Like, all of these characters I could use a few shards for, not Kestrel maybe, but the, you know, Nemesis is great. And, and so I'm uh, I'm stoked. I think it's I think it's fine. I like it as well. I like I like these characters. And and I was just thinking, oh, I'm not gonna buy these characters. I totally forgot that. Yeah, on the free path, you get all this stuff too. So I, I like it. This is good. This is good. And I, if they're gonna keep doing this, these half season passes uh, as a free to play or, or a non buying these passes, I, I love mm -hmm. it. That's that's fine. I'm getting more free stuff. All right. Next is Pocket Dimension. We talked a little bit about this. You mentioned that the rewards are Spider Man 2099. The trait for this is going to be the quantum trait. And if we go to the quantum trait right now, that is a pimp deck character. We already talked about how bad they are, how useless they are. You know, run seven, even at tier five on Blitz sometimes, I still lose with the pimp tech team, which used to be Ghost used to be able to carry that team. How good is the pimp tech team now? Is it worth building up the pimp tech team for some Spider Man 2099 shards? Uh, what else other things are going to be here? We're getting some fully crafted teal and orange gear, catalyst parts, gold promo credits, silver promotion credits, gold more. Is it worth building the, these pimp tech characters for this? No. No? All right. <laughs> uh, let me take a look here. So. On my roster, it looks like I will have to use Ghost, but for those people who did build Spider-Man Noir, you can avoid the Pimtech tag altogether, and you can just go for Spider-Woman, Agatha Harkness, Dark Beast, Spider-Man Noir, and Black Panther 1 million. Those will probably get you through. I don't know why Kang the Conqueror is in there. I don't know if he is going to be actually available Definitely not for the free to play community, but maybe an offer, um, maybe, that, maybe that an offer, probably an offer. Right. And then you could throw Kang in there. And of course, he's going to probably carry because he'll be the newest character. And that's just how tier lists work. Newest characters make it to the top. So um, I would try like I would try to avoid using Ghost if you can. Although I'm I don't recommend people build Spider-Man Noir either. He has had negligible value. Yeah, like you just don't need him anywhere. So it's kind of the same thing. If they if we get a fourth or fifth member to that Tangled Web team, maybe he'll integrate better or get a little bit of a rework. But I'm finding him absolutely useless. So he is level one at the bottom of my roster. And I am instead mm -hmm. using Ghost because I'm an older player and have Ghost at level 80. But again, you know, Pimtech for this is it's no, just don't please don't build them. No, don't build them. Maybe, They're not worth maybe it. Ghost anybody yeah. else but them. All right, yeah. let, me, let me just look at my roster real quick, see if anybody stands out. Oh, we got, yeah, yeah, all the characters you mentioned. Agatha, Spider-Woman, Black Panther, yeah, anybody but them. No, no. I guess, that I guess said, the question is Noir or Ghost is, is going to be the best. So like on your roster, I would say definitely Ghost. You have her built bigger and she has tags that give her a, a carry ability in, in Dark but Dimensions. Would you, would you take dimensions. her in or would you build her though? I don't think I'm going to build no. her from this point. No, I don't think you will need to build her. You know, your okay. other characters are are in the teal. You have Spider Woman, still a powerful, fast character with lots of control features. I think savvy. Play I, honestly, I think you're going to walk through this valley. But most players with even smaller rosters than this, they could just be pretty savvy with how they attack into these nodes. They sh they shouldn't have any trouble with it. You know, and you've got some time to work through it too. And yeah. you have, like me, I believe you have a full five extra tunes you could take in. So you get to a challenging True. note. You could send in I that stack team to, that. Yeah. To, to take the openers to give your team, the, your, your A team, the advantage to, to go into it. So I don't think people are going to have too much of trouble with this. I do remember other pocket dimensions having a longer list in their roster of choices. This did seem a little slim to me. 
It's it's because they want to promote the movie, run. Right. Yeah, I think so. And you know what? I think Goofy Rexy did a video recently, had a good take on PimTech and and what's going on with the Gamma Four and this quantum, uh, this pocket dimension stuff. So. Well, we do have more data mines about this. The quantum celebrations. This is about uh, a return of a classic event campaign. They're talking about the new weekly blog. We're talking about a small but mighty campaign event. And from these data mines here, it looks like three extensions of the Ant-Man and Wasp uh, event that I think was in year one we had this. So it looks like, uh, at least according to these data mines, a level 75 requirement, seven star uh, a seven star requirement for this Ant-Man and Wasp uh, level 85 for each of these characters. Now, I'm not sure what the rewards are gonna be for this uh, for this event coming up. Is it worth bringing your characters up to level 85? Ant-Man, Wasp, do they have enough value? Or are you gonna wait to see what is, uh, what is the rewards for this event before you even uh, consider building up to some of these characters? No reworks, no levels, Valley. No reworks, no levels. Won't touch nah, them until they rework this team. Easy. It is one of the worst teams in the game. I will not touch them no matter what they do. What if the rewards are so good that it makes up for those use of training mats and gold? Is it they'll, still They'll never no, realistically no pay us that good of a reward. <laughs> they'll never do that, so it doesn't matter. All right, all right. You're probably running that. Just so, just wanted to play devil's advocate there, see, see what you would do. All right. But that is it, guys. Uh, that's, that's all we got going on right now. Looks like a pretty fun week. You got to do your hoarding. Uh, these new Greek raid difficulties looks like it's a new challenge in Marvel Strike Force and Cosmic Crucible. I'm still having fun with it. Any other final thoughts before we go, Run? Uh, I think we hit it all. I think we did as well. So good stuff coming up. Good stuff this week. Bad stuff coming up, bad stuff this week. We we talked about everything. If you if you haven't already subscribed, though, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. Uh, check me out on social media. And of course, down in the links below, make sure you check out Run7 over on his YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you watch his stream. He streams every morning, or not every morning. Uh, Monday, many, Wednesday, which, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's, 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 that's why we can't always raid you there. <laughs> All right, though, guys. Uh, that is it. Hopefully you guys like this. Thank you once again, Run. It is always a fun conversation. And before you guys go, make sure you give me that Hulk fist bump, Run7. Run and Valley, out. Have a great day, guys.